We're going to be palpating the muscle known as tensor fascia lata. So we're going to be describing our O's and I's. First thing I'm going to do is look for the iliac crest. So I'm finding the top of the iliac crest. I'm going to follow it all the way forward until we get to the anterior superior iliac spine, the ASIS. And then I'm going to drop off the lateral aspect and work my way up along the external surface of it until I come across the iliac tuberculum or tubercle and I'm going to leave a finger on that landmark. So between the ASIS and this tuberculum is the origin on the external surface of the anterior iliac crest. So it does not officially attach to the ASIS or the tuberculum when you're reading most notes, but it's actually the origin is on that external ilium in between them. So I like referencing them to kind of get an idea of how wide the muscle is. It has a very bony origin, which we're gonna fire this off just to help us identify the muscle belly. And very simply, I'm gonna ask her just to roll the whole extremity into medial rotation. Now, as soon as we do that, you'll actually start to get the outer shape of it. Now, if I ask her to lift her leg up off the table, now you're gonna get a very defined kind of anterior and posterior border of it. We add the third element is bringing the leg away from her other leg into some abduction. And that again, is gonna really activate this tensor fascia lata muscle right in here. So I have a nice, easy to palpate muscle belly that I will follow lateral. Let's bring the leg back down. So let's repeat those actions one more time. You ask the person to roll their leg in, medial rotation. You ask them to lift it up off the table, in flexion, and then push out towards you into abduction. So if you ask them to hold, and we keep this leg kind of extended or locked, that'll help us identify and activate this tensor fascia lata. Now all of TFL actually inserts into soft tissue. So as it has a bony origin, it's heading lateral and a little more posterior, and then it's gonna put all of its fibers into the iliotibial band, or otherwise known as tract. So the iliotibial band is coming down the whole lateral aspect of the leg. It has gluteus maximus inserting into it from posterior, and it's gonna have TFL inserting into anterior. So for that, we're gonna to try to identify where the iliotibial band is. I'm just gonna roll her shorts up with permission, just a little bit higher on the side. So we'll just fold it in here. Good, like so, bring the leg back down. I'd like you to, with a locked knee, lift it up and just push out into me. Good, so you can start to see this indentation that starts to form along the lateral leg. Can you relax your leg for a second? Now I want you to lock your knee as if contracting your quadriceps really tight. That is firing off the quads, but in this case I want you to relax and now just push out into me with that forceful knee. This is not activating the quads, but it is tightening up the iliotibial band. So we're gonna follow TFL into this iliotibial band. And then if you'd like to, you can follow the iliotibial band all the way down past the knee joint, easily strumming it as it finally inserts into Gertie's tubercle here of the tibia. Just to orient yourself for Gertie's tubercle, I have the tibial tuberosity. I would move along what is known as the oblique line of the tibia, and then I have a round kind of bony object as Gertie's tubercle right here. So depending on your source book that you're reading for the muscle tensor fascia lata, you might see helps lock the knee as one of its actions, but for the muscle belly itself, we really wanna focus on that flexion, abduction, and external rotation of the acetabulofemoral joint. And that's gonna conclude our palpation of tensor fascia lata.